Good afternoon. In this video, I am outlining all of the materials necessary to make a bespoke jacket and where to find them. Generally specifying the cheapest and or the best places to find them. To manage expectations though, I might suggest you budget yourself around £100 for the trimmings. Just the trimmings. The main companies I'm comparing are McCulloch and Wallace, the lining company, or Bernstein and Bantley's. They're the, those two are the most reliable. If I happen to find something on Kenton Trimmings or William Gee, then those two will also get listed. And there are also some trade suppliers like Chevelle Textiles and Richard James Weldon's, who you have to contact for a stock list and a price and you pay with a bank transfer. As far as I'm aware anyway, I haven't used Richard James Weldon before. The first thing obviously is fabric. Now you need about two meters of a plain fabric for a normal suit, for a normal sized jacket. And I can't necessarily say where you should buy because it very heavily depends on your budget, considering what's often used to make bespoke jackets. There are dead stock places where you can find diamonds in the rough, um, Woolcrest in Hackney and Dalston Mill in Dalston, not to be confused with Dalston Mill, the website. You can look on Yorkshire Fabrics, which has a sale section. Similarly, on eBay, you can find marvellous fabrics uh, for fractions of their original price. Brook Taverner Cloth is possibly the most expensive place I might suggest that you look. And for now, avoid any other trade retailers like Harrison's, Holland and Sherry, Scabal, English Cloth, the like. Fabric realistically needs its own video, but stay away from anything that says polyester, cotton, velvet, corduroy, seersucker, fresco, linen, and much else that we might find difficult to work with. The best, basically just look for wool, ideally tweed, flannel, or worsted, and nothing above a super 130s. Lining wise, we also need two meters, whether that's all the same lining with a sleeve match, or a different one for the sleeves, for example. For the main body, you only need approximately the height of the jacket, based on uh, about a 144 centimeter width weft. Comparably, we'd only need about the height of the sleeve amount. So either two meters or a meter each. I suggest avoiding polyester, satin, or silk. Armazine is a very good choice, as well as Cupro Brem silks that you can find from McCulloch and Wallace and Croft Mill. The printed li lining selection from Bernstein's is also very good to use, although it is much more expensive. Decent horn buttons can be fairly expensive. Normal suits have a 32 line or 20 millimeter button for the front and 22 line or 15 millimeter buttons for the cuff and pockets. The lining company is a little bit hit on miss for finding sets. Uh, Mac, uh, Mac and Wallace have an extensive selection, but not necessarily sets either. Amazon is a decent place to find inexpensive sets, but they are often resin or plastic but their mother of pearl sets are excellent. I might have a link in the description for different sets, but I really think buttons need their own video themselves as well. The absolute cheapest body canvas that I could find was from Mac and Wallace at 548 a meter. It is incredibly lightweight. I would usually encourage a more midweight canvas so that it's a bit easier to work with. The canvas goes in the front of the jacket, all the way down the front of the forepart, to give it some weight, some body, and promoting shape after we pad it. 
allowing it to drape better, sort of sit away from the body. And this one is padded, but I haven't pressed in the shape yet. One meter is enough, but if your measurements are significantly larger, then maybe you'll need more. Definitely if you're making a very long coat because it always goes the entire length. General advice is to soak all of the canvases in water for 10 minutes or overnight and then let them dry before using them. I'm not aware many tailors actually do this, but generally it depends on the specific type of canvas. But a press and a soak with a, sorry, a press with a steamy iron is always a good, is always good practice. The general distinguishing feature of chest canvas is a strong springy weft and a warp with the integrity of overcooked spaghetti. So it feels like it would snap if it were folded on the weft, too far on the weft, but there's no damage and it folds very easily on the warp. It sits in the middle of the body canvas, body canvas? It sits between the body canvas and the demet just over the chest, as I said, to give it better drape and allowing it to sit away from the body promoting shape. The strong weft also means it can be very pointy along the selvage, so it should be trimmed before we start working with it. The chest canvas is sandwiched between the body canvas and the demet. Like I say, the chest canvas is very rough, so it might rub through the lining. And also, like I said, it's got a very strong weft, and we don't really want that poking the wearer if we can help it. In specifically soft or lightweight canvases, such are, such are popular in Italian tailoring, the demet is completely skipped over. You need about the same amount of demet as you do chest canvas, half a meter, forgot to say that. And from Mac and Wallace, the cheapest by storm is the lightweight demet at three pounds 60 a meter. For the collars, essentially, we need about 15 centimeters of bias cut collar canvas, as in 15 centimeters wide and, well, at least the length of the collar. Like I say, cut on the bias. I can't be re exact regarding how much you need because it's the total size of the collar plus inlay. However, the best and cheapest per unit wise is from Mac and Wallace and I think you can get about eight collar canvases for 16 pounds or eight sets of collar canvases plus 10 for each subsequent meter. Although this is a very soft collar canvas against some other slightly tougher ones. Otherwise you can get bias cut strips at about 15 centimeters wide, which isn't usually a problem depending on the size of your collar. Like I say, the pattern might not totally fit, but there's usually significant enough inlay on the pattern. Wow. That's gonna get cut off later anyway. Basically the same is Melton. I'm still on my first meter from Bernstein's back when it was a bit cheaper. It's not the same as Demet at all. It's a very light material that basically doesn't fray. The importance of which you'll get to understand when you use it or see me using it. At the moment, the unit price is about £2.58, which 
you could get a single one from Kenton Trimmings for £2.50 plus postage if they haven't, well, discontinued that at this point, which 99% of the time is enough. It's basically this amount, which again, like I say, maybe it doesn't totally fit, but it's going to get cut off later anyway. Myself, I really always suggest buying a meter and every time you make a jacket you just use the collar pattern to make a new one each time, undoubtedly resulting in a lower unit price overall and much less waste. Although it is a lot more expensive up front, so obviously you need to take that into account. And I'll start by making clear now that the collar melting needs to be cut with the brake line on the bias. I do not need to explain what shoulder pads are, but there is some variation in that we can buy sort of wingtip shoulder pads, or we can put together some very simple shoulder pads with just some wadding and lining. Of course though, if you want shoulder pads or not, that has to change the shoulder pattern of the, the shoulder of the pattern to match. I really suggest that we only ever need small shoulder pads, very slim shoulder pads, if at all. And maybe I say practice with shoulder pads first and then progress to without. It can be if you want to go without, it can be substituted with just some canvas to go over the shoulder following the armhole seam. Sleeve head. You won't ever need more than a meter, and you can get it with or without the canvas, obviously depending on whether you want it thicker or less structured. Although it is very much an optional extra, much like shoulder pads, you can exclude it if you would like. Demet, however, is a good and oft-used alternative. Basically just cut on the bias generally three inches wide or so, fold it in half, and then one side is folded again back to meet the fold. And I'm sort of shooting myself in the foot here because I have an awful lot of sleeve head that I don't really want to use anymore. And sharing this, got little hope of actually selling it on. Anyway, Salisha, for a jacket you'll never really need much more than three quarters of a meter. It's for pockets again as well as other parts of the construction. You can look around and find Salisha for five to ten pounds a meter. I bought myself a long roll from Bowles from Bernstein's and just so that I can keep a consistent colour between my work and not have to buy Silesia every time. I was going mad constantly running out, like halfway through a project. For those interested, the dove pocketing isn't used in jackets because traditionally people would keep their keys in their front trouser pockets, so the Silesia had to be a little bit more hard wearing. The more you know. Holland linen, sometimes referred to as Holland, usually referred to as linen, is what tailors tend to use instead of fusing in pockets openings, welts, and for reinforcements. It's like cartilage, basically. There is also cotton Holland, which is largely the same, but matte and cheaper. It's well, it feels like it functions the same way, but I think that remains to be seen from my end. Bernstein's sells both Hollands. Mac and Wallace has two black colours as far as I'm aware. Kenton, I think, sells it cheapest, but is very patchy with stock. Or used to sell it, I don't know. In bespoke tailoring, there is little to no fusing used. It's often used to reinforce fabric where it may fray or be otherwise relatively weak, and to close belly darts. 
There are other uses too, but I don't necessarily use them or particularly know them. You could buy a small sheet, well, maybe not that small, but and it'll last a dozen suits. I think the best place is Bernstein's, the lining company, basically a lifetime supply for £8.34. Edge tape is basically just lining or silicia cut on the bias and is about two seams wide. It's used in the seam allowance for body canvas so that we needn't catch and fold the canvas in the seam when we machine sew the facing on. It just removes that layer making the seam a little bit thinner or a lot thinner to be honest. I have cut my own in the past. I think it is very much worth buying a reel and there's a genius way of making a continuous length which I haven't finished yet that I'll try and find the guide to if you don't already know how to do it. Bother. We can use fusible edge tape, it's much faster. Being fused isn't necessarily a problem because it is only it only needs to be helpful temporarily and it only is helpful temporarily. When it comes unstuck, there will be prick stitching already holding the canvas into the edge of the facing. We need silk thread in two senses, in that we need buttonhole twist and hand silk. Oops. I've talked about silk before, but again, we need buttonhole twist, which we can easily find and buy in small amounts from both the lining company and Mac and Wallace and Kenton still, although they have a bit of a patchy stock. We will only need ever as many as two 10 meter reels for a jacket for the buttons and buttonholes. We also need some form of finishing silk. We have to prick stitch the front edge, sew the seams of the lining and other smaller pieces. The best choice is generally Gutemann hand silk. The skines are expensive, but they are very economical. There is also furrier silk skines, which are much cheaper and much finer, and I think it's synthetic silk. And they are much more affordable if they got imported to the UK again. I think they're very popular, popular in the US. If we don't want to fork out though, we can either use wax polyester machine thread or more buttonhole twist just for the same thing. To go with the buttonholes, we also need gimp, which I forgot about until the next day, obviously. There are reels, which are generally very expensive, except for the Gutemann Argman reels for some reason. Ketten had, has, I don't know, by the meter, and you can also improvise with just more silk twist taking four to eight lengths and twisting them together, basically. GIMP is generally exclusive to jackets, turns out, because it's too heavy, too stiff for trousers. The point of this video is to very clearly and succinctly communicate the basic materials needed to make a bespoke jacket. Everything has many types and alternatives and can change the jacket and making a different type of jacket may need other specific materials in itself. I don't think this will substitute being able to hold, feel and touch the materials yourself, but it should get you started and I can begin to publish my new jacket making series at least.